Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. A while back after Twin had been banned in Modern, I was sort of known in the UK as the Blue Red Twin player, because I used to play it and pretty much nothing else for about 18 months and I did pretty well with it. So, inspired by a video that Bosch and Roll made the other day, which I'll link in the description, it was a good video you should watch, there's lots of learning in it, I wanted to play some Twin again. Uh, the build that Bosch and Roll played was kind of trying to match like tempo-y stuff of having delvers and things like that alongside the combo but then not having enough stuff for the combo and he concluded at the end of his video that his his build was all wrong as well so this is a lot more like the traditional builds i used to play back in the day so we've got a combo of deceiver exarch or pestamite plus splinter twin so we put it on the creature we tap it to make a copy the copy untaps the one with the splinter twin on rinse and repeat until we have infinite hasty creatures we attack with that's the combo, and we can kind of throw it out of nowhere by end of turn, we play this, untap, play this, and we win the game. We've got like a sort of control -y shell here, so we've got our ponders and brainstorms as you'd expect, and we've got interaction like Force of Will and Lightning Bolt. We've got Brazen Borrowers, a nice catch-all, and a Spell Pierce, which is just a nice cheap interaction to try and stop the things that might kill our creatures. Also, the reason we've got four Deceiver Exarch is the, the big booty on this. Four toughness definitely is a lot more relevant with Orcish Bow Masters and Lightning Bolts flown around. But then we've got this little sort of card advantage suite here that I think is going to be quite powerful for this. In the past, I've played things like um, the little baby Jace, the two mana one that was a creature that then becomes a planeswalker. I used to play that for a while, when, uh, and you could use that to dig to your combo, but also you could use Force of Will from your graveyard for the pitch cast with it, so it was quite nice. And it was an alternate win condition. But times have changed. Snapcaster Mage is still pretty reasonable. Uh, you see it popping up in Grixis Control decks, but here we can use it to recoup like Lightning Bolts, Cantrips, Spell Pierces, that sort of jam. And obviously some potent Cyborg cards we'll get to in a minute. But Tamiyo is a real big deal here because this allows us to play the Tamiyo out and we can kind of just play Draw Go whilst accumulating cards with this. This is also a nice alternative win condition because if you draw half your library, you should win the game. And that's just a given. So this is a nice way that we can utilize playing at sort of instant speed by just having all these clues we can crack and do stuff that way. Then we also have a big hammer and Megas of the Moon. This is played over the Harbinger of the Seas because we're generally going to be fetching our basic islands because we have a pretty basic heavy mana base. So what we want is to fetch our islands and then have the thing we play mean that we can help get our red mana for Splinter Twins. So we've got two mountains and then we've obviously got a couple of Thundering Falls and a couple of Volks here. But the main idea is to use the Maze of the Moon, which is very good in the meta right now because Eldrazia is the second most played deck right now, I think. So just having this nice big hammer for some decks that we can use that in a way that can actually fix our mana sometimes as well is quite handy because we want the sort of the splash color of the red, which is kind of what it is here. So we're going to be fetching the, the sources to cast our spells and then we can just fetch one red source later on and have this and then our future lands will have the red mana for the Splinter. It makes sense. So... And that's pretty much the list here. Sideboard-wise, we've got some more moon effects. This is because the meta is really skewed with Eldrazi right now. Like, you can play against nothing but Eldrazi in a league. So I just want to have six moon effects and just be like, okay, we've got that covered, and an extra consigned to memory because the deck's very popular. And there's a lot of uh, frog decks around, so we want to have a bunch of red blasts. And there's a lot of graveyard stuff around. Not as much, though. The Risk Aminator is kind of easing off a bit, and people are just playing mid rangey frog decks because frog is bananas but we've got some graveyard hate here this is another thing we can double up with with snapcaster mage obviously doubling up with red blast and things is really good too and we've got a couple of meltdowns for some of the artifact decks and we're hoping to just use like some of our counter magic and stuff to get through some of the combo matchups there's not that many combo matchups because they get taken apart by the blue black shells generally speaking so that's the deck it's been a while since i've jammed twin on the channel uh maybe over a year in fact uh, every now and then I jam it to see if it's still bad, and it usually is, but we're going to see how it fares today. I think Tamiyo is quite a big upgrade for this sort of deck. Alright, remember to like and subscribe, and let's start twinning it up. Alright, so Ripping Hand has the combo. We have some protection. We just need to get there with our mana. And we can certainly do that with what's available. Ponder can go a long way. Alright, Swamp. A Dark Ritual. I don't think I'm going to counter the Dark Ritual, and we're going to see what comes out of it. The Entomb. Alright, this is what we're going to counter here. Can they go again? Second Entomb and Reanimate. Well, they're just going to pass. Alright, they're going to pass. Not using their mana. So we don't really have to worry about our mana base being under attack from our opponent's thing, so we're just going to go and get a Volcanic here. 
My opponent is not about that life. They're about putting big monsters into play as early as possible. Uh, I don't really want these. The Brainstorm is okay, but the rest of these cards aren't actually going to help us very much. I think we're going to go any order and shuffle. All right, we drew one of them anyway. We're just looking for another land. We can play a Thundering Falls, holding up Lightning Bolt next turn. Turn after, we can Pestermite. Right, a Raucous Theatre from our opponents. They put the card on top, so that's something we need to be a little bit worried about. So we play the Thundering Falls here. Uh, Prismatic Vista we do not need anymore, so that can go into the graveyard. So if we can get to next turn, we can deploy the Pestermite, untap them, split it into twin. Our opponent's unlikely to have interaction. Now there is an argument to Pestermite to tap down one of your, our opponent's lands. They can't cast something here. I'll just play a basic island and pass. All right, there was no end of turn in two, and that's good for us. I don't believe this Rakdos Theatre is actually red mana. I think it's just there as a surveil land. So I'm going to play out our Pestermite. Tap this down, and given the composition of our opponent's decks, what we've seen so far, I think we're just going to go for it here. Split twin on a Pestermite, create a token, and tap our permanent, and we'll repeat. All right, our opponent scooped up, rather than making us click through it, which is handy, and we get to go to the sideboard. Surgical extractions are going to be useful here. There is an argument for Pyroblast if we think our opponent is on a blue build with frogs. But I don't believe that is the case. The Megs of the Moon does not look very useful here, so they can come out for Surgical Extractions. And then we just need to make one more cut. It's probably a Lightning Bolt. We still want to keep some Lightning Bolts in, because our opponent might have, like, Daffy Void Walk and stuff that we want to deal with. But generally speaking, I'm quite happy with how this looks. We have some Cow Magic. We have a Threat. This is probably keepable. Now, if we get Grief, we're going to lose, probably. But that is the nature of Grief sometimes. It is. Okay. So they're going to have a free roll at hitting us this turn. What did they exile? A Molten Collapse. So they are more into red mana than I originally thought. But Sorcery Speed removal spells aren't that scary for us. Do they have like the Dark Ritual or the Lotus Petal to go this turn and make a big scary monster? There's a Lotus Petal. So can they Entomb Reanimate here? Just the Faith is Looting. That might mean they have a monster in hand rather than the fact that they're fishing. Yeah, so there's a Grizzlebrand. Do I believe we beat Grizzlebrand here? I don't believe we do. Uh, I'll, I'll just call it a day there. All right, we get to do the same thing, but we're on the play this time, so that's going to be a little bit better for us. Like mulliganing to two answers is a thing we can do, but it's a little sketchy. All right, so we have a ponder that might be able to find another answer. I think this is fine. Again, we do have problems with grief, but that's just the nature of grief. But we get to keep a decent enough hand that has the ability to dig for a second piece of disruption. Uh, it's in any order in shuffle, I think. A lightning bolt. Okay, probably the worst card in our deck that's just in there because our opponent might have like an alternative plan that doesn't go through the graveyard. All right, they didn't do anything there. That's certainly a handy one for us. Let's cast this brainstorm. What do you want? We don't want this lightning bolt, I don't believe. And everything else is pretty reasonable. I don't think we need the second snappy right now. So let's go and get ourselves a volcanic. I think I'm just going to hold up the Spell Pierce now. Just gives us a nice clean answer for an Entomb at end step if they had one. It gives us two pieces of interaction if our opponent does have something like a Grief here. All right, here is a Grief pitching on Mask. Do we want our opponent to see our hand? Or do we just say no to this Grief? So we can discard two cards of our choice. Or we could just discard one card of our opponent's choice. I think we're going to discard one card of our opponent's choice. Exiled and unmasked to play this grief. So our opponent might be able to play a land and circumvent our spell pierce here. The next turn we can snap cast a will spell pierce. They take in the force. Spell pierce is obviously easier to play around. If they play a land here and reanimate, that's gonna suck for us. They did not do that. Okay. An island. So we have the spell pierce now, so we may as well cast a ponder. Uh, sure. And I'll play out this volcanic. And I will pass a turn with Spell Pierce or Brazen Borrower available. And we also have the Force of Will kicking around. It's very much a matchup we have to try and not lose it and then worry about winning it later. If we play something like an Animate Dead, we can bounce it. But that's not the... An Entomb. I think we pitch the Borrower here. Still got Spell Pierce. They know we have a Spell Pierce, so I'm curious what they're going to play here. We're obviously going to cast a Spell Pierce on this. Have they got a Dark Ritual to pay? No. Okay, so we're going to draw the Deceiver Exarch. I think we probably just hold up the snappy here so we can snappy spell pierce 
or snappy brainstorm in an emergency. I don't think we're playing to see Rex Arc to tap our opponent's land. I don't think that's going to be relevant. A dark ritual. I think spell piercing is going to help here. Animate dead targeting grief. Okay, I think we're going to cast the Snapcaster Mage. And I would like to get this Brainstorm so we can at least hide some cards from our hand. At least they're only reanimating a Grief. That's not too bad. So we can hide whatever's relevant. We know there's a land on top. Oh, okay. So I guess you put two of these cards got to go back. So it's probably just going to be a copy of Twin and a copy of Exarch. So I probably can take this Splinter Twin. Sometimes you do also put the Splinter Twin on the Snapcaster Mage and just have like all the card advantage you want from your graveyard. A little bit riskier these days, but it's still an option. Our opponent does have mana floating and other lands, so I'm curious why they play this Dark Ritual. Was it to bait something out from us, or was it because they've got more plays? Right, it was to bait stuff around. Interesting. I'll play this out. I don't want to crack it. Uh, we might as well poke for two. Gives us less clicks next turn when we try and do our combo. Well, they're taking the trade here. That suggests to me that our opponent wants to reanimate the grief again, which won't do anything. I suppose it's not strictly speaking true. If our opponent has Molten Collapse here, they can float red mana. Target permanent and opponent controls. All right, we tap the red. That's good. All right, our opponent's just got an Underground Sea available, so we are going to slam our combo and have a jolly good time with it, hopefully. All right, we got the match. Oh, it's like I never stopped playing Twin. That felt great. All right, let's go to round two. Right, to run the play, uh, we can begin with the Tamiya, which isn't a bad way to begin a game of Magic the Gathering, so I'll take that. We'll find some other pieces along the way. Now, there is a downside in what we're doing, but we can hopefully brainstorm into a land that doesn't come into play tap. Right, Prince start out on six. Let's just go and get our basic islands, play the Tamiya, and move on from there. What flavour of deck is our opponent? A wasteland. Well, that's a little bit mean, but... All right, I'm going to cast a brainstorm... See if we can shake loose something here. All right, we, I guess we can get rid of the two lands that just come in and get destroyed by the wasteland. Unless we want our opponent to fire off a wasteland here. That's kind of an interesting ploy. We could play the Thundering Falls and bin off this Thundering Falls. So we could put like Snapcaster on top, which we can draw again in a minute, and then the Thundering Falls. And then we can play a Thundering Falls if we want to. Oh, we should have attacked first, but we're going to get the uh, Tamiyo up and running. We missed out on getting a clue there. All right, let's play this out and see if our opponent is interested in wastelanding us and slowing themselves down, which means they're going to have a lot more difficulty getting the pressure on the Tamiyo. Next turn, we can shut down their mana if they don't do that. Count of Souls on Eldrazi. All right, this is why we have Main Deck Blood Moon. This is going to be the 2-2 the guy. It is. Not a problem. Yeah, our opponent's not going to be happy about this. So we go and get ourselves the basic island here. And this is why we're running Blood Moon as opposed to Harmony of the Seas. How do you like that, opponent? Let's just keep pumping up the Tamiyo. It can take a beating. That's fine. And then we can sort of stabilise afterwards. Yep. Just another mountain. So they're going to attack Tamiyo for two here. Because that's the way that I'm most likely to offer a trade. But this is only a 1-2. So we get to block and get the kill here. Yeah, our opponent's had enough. All right, guess what I'm bringing in? Two more Blood Moons. And guess what? A third Blood Moon. Um, consigned to memory. What is that going to be in place of? It's probably the Spell Pierce, isn't it? And then we just need to find out where these Blood Moons fit in. How important is our, like, Snapcaster Mage type thing? Not massively convinced by that. And how important is our combo? I think our combo is still pretty important. It just gives us a nice backdoor way of winning the game. Tapping a creature down can save us a lot of time and life. Brazen Borrower is pretty nice to get some things out of the way. We're probably trimming on Snapcaster and Borrower and then we've got one more slot to fill here. We could take out a Pestamite. We could take out a Twin. We're less about the Twin thing here actually because we're just going to try and lock them out with a Blood Moon so that seems reasonable. Because if our opponent has just one basic we can just tap it in their upkeep underneath the Blood Moon. All right, we are not quite where I want to be here. We don't have any cantrips to get us there either. I'm not massively convinced by this one. We have an answer to like the first thing, but then where are we going? I think we can do better. Um, okay, yeah, this seems good. We have removal for the little guys. We have Megs of the Moon to stop them playing anything bigger. 
we probably throw back one Magus. It's either the Magus or the Ponder, but I don't think the Ponder's where I want to be. I'd rather have the ability to dig and find stuff. And we've got lots of Blood Moon effects because I came prepared for this world of Eldrazi that we're currently living in. The one thing about a narrow meta game means it is easier to just have uh, a sideboard that just has a bunch of cards for each matchup that you can just completely skew the matchups in your favour. Oh, our snow covered wastes. Sure. That's cool. I've not really seen the snow covered ones before. Do I want to ponder here or do I want to lightning bolt? Like, what are we pondering for? We already have the things we want. I think we're just going to play out the mountain and pass. An ancient tomb, you say. Is this a glaring flesh raker? It is. Let's say no to glaring flesh raker. Another mage of the moon. Do, what do I want to do with this Scording Tarn? Do I want to go and get an island now and try and set up a ponder where we want all the cards or do I want to ponder where we only get two of the cards? I think just the ponder where we get two cards is fine here. Uh, Splinter Twin. We, well, we definitely don't want the Force of Will. So we'll bury that one. A Thundering Falls isn't that exciting. We're going to draw both of these if we keep this pile. I don't think we are keeping this pile. I think it's an any order and shuffle. All right, we drew one of them anyway. So we've got a Lightning Bolt to clear the next threat. And then we can untap and stick a Megas of the Moon. And hopefully that locks our opponent out long enough so we can kill them in some other fashion. Thornos here is obviously not great for us here. So this looks like our opponent is holding up for a Kozilek's Command. All right, we, we, we drew two of the cards that we put on top, sure. I think we are still playing out the Magus here. I think it's too strong not to do. It does feel like a very obvious Kozilek's Command here. So they're going to float some mana. They didn't float the mana. Wow. They might have a Dismember then. Yeah, this looks like a Dismember to me. Yep, yeah, they're paying life. All right. So now we kind of need to... I hope they don't play anything too scary here. Or that we can draw a land that we can then use to kill whatever they play with our Lightning Bolt. All right, an Ancient Tomb. So they can play something pretty large here. They can do a kicked Micro Spawn if they want. All right, they're just really fearful of our Magus, it seems. But second verse, same as the first. Here we go. Got more dismembers over there, opponent? No, not this time. They do have a lot of mana and the colorless source, so they can play stuff. Okay, they've drawn their basic as well. So they've got both their basics out. Like, uh, so Micro Spawn? They can't kick it, at least. All right. I don't think they have another basic, so it doesn't really matter what they get here. For the most part, it's just going to be plus one mana. You tend to have one of each basic. Of, of, of these two, sorry. Just not, they don't run... I haven't seen any with mountains or anything. Okay. They might be looking at cracking a Vexing Bauble soon. I would like to ponder. A Deceiver Exarch, you say? Don't mind if I do. We definitely don't want this Force of Will, though. Shame we can't take them both. We probably should have put the land in our hand. This does mean if our opponent cracks the Vexing Ball, we at least get to do something, though. Because we have forcible blue card if they do crack looking for another card. So this game is basically all being about... Alright, so yeah, so they've turned on our Force of Will if we want it. But in our opponent's upkeep, we can tap down their Snow-Covered Wastes. And that sh cut, shuts off the most permanents that our opponent can play. And Eldrazi Linebreaker, that's not good enough. Sure, you can hit me for four. I'm just going to combo you out. Oh, I love playing Twin. Like the good old days. So this is the Mountain. I guess, do we attack here? What can our opponent have? We don't need to do anything. Do we tap down our opponent's snow-covered wastes, or do we tap down their creature in combat? I think we tap down their... snow-covered wastes end step, maybe? I don't know. Like, this is not enough damage to kill us. So we can see what's coming out, and we can see what the problem is. If this is just going to be the big seven-mana dude that blows up our Magus, that's not an issue. No, they don't have double colorless, so they can't cast that. Is this a kick sewing micro spawn? No, because they're not using the wastes. Okay, I'm gonna have to read this one. Whenever a land you control enters, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, you may reveal it, put it into your hand. If you don't put it into your hand, you may put it into your graveyard. So reach seven five for five. Yeah, I guess that eats up a lot of. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, right, so this is gonna go on this, and we're gonna tap it down. This doesn't give it trample. But our opponent's got one card in hand. Tap this one down. So the line breaker's ability doesn't achieve anything here. They can attack into our 1 4, but that doesn't get us anywhere. Do we know the top card of our library? I can't remember now. All right. This is just all of it, isn't it? This is just everything we require. We've got forcible backup for the one card in our opponent's hand. Untap, target permanent you control. This one. So we're going to make these until our opponent scoops or we have enough damage. All right, 
Uh, we're 2 0. We are absolutely doing the twin thing. I am having an absolute blast here. And I think how I've constructed this deck based on the meta is looking okay. We have to wait to see what happens when we come up against the Psychic Frogs. Because our main deck doesn't feel amazing against the Frogs. But we'll see. Let's go to round three. All right, our opener for round three does not have any land, so... Oh, no, I clicked the wrong button. Oh, no. Oh, no, that is... That is a disaster. That is an absolute disaster. Uh, am I beating a Tamiyo? Probably not. Oh, no. Please draw a land. Oh, no. I meant to click the mulligan button. My mouse just got slightly caught on my mouse mat as I went over there and didn't quite go far enough. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, it's an uphill struggle, that's for sure. Psychic Frog. I don't think this matters because we are so far behind. Okay, a Prismatic Vista. Let's go and get ourselves a basic island. There's no point trying to remove this because you can't remove Psychic Frog with damage-based removal or combat. That's not how that card works. What a ridiculous card Psychic Frog is. We're getting plowed. We are getting plowed. Like, we can win this game still. We do have to draw lands. But if our opponent gets to a situation where they get to see our hand, then I'm going to say no and just concede the game. Oh dear. What a what a terrible misclick to start the round. Definitely rolled a one on dexterity right there. A Tamio, sure. They've seen a snap custom made from us. Alright, so they're playing the deck that I think went up on the channel yesterday for you. Okay. Well, we are technically playing the game. Alright, let's brainstorm. Uh, okay, I guess I want the line of bolt. We don't need double borrower here. We need the land. We need this because that's how we're going to be able to win this game. I would like to keep the ponder. And we do get to keep the ponder, right? Because we put them both on top. We've already played our land for the turn. So next turn we shuffle away the borrower. What am I more worried about? Tamio or... It's Tamio because if this flips and does the plus, that's absolutely devastating for us. Because <laughs> our creature only has one toughness. All right. Uh, sorry, one uh, power. That's a bit of a doozy, isn't it? Because archive... So next turn, we can play the Deceiver Exarch on our main phase, untap our land and ponder, and just try and have a Hail Mary there. Or we could play it and try and just hope that we draw the red source, which is a little bit more of a wild one. This is a really tough choice, I think. Like, we can jump this in, it can kill an Ocelot Pride, which might surprise our opponent. But we're less likely to have the mana we require to go off the following turn. If our opponent's got a removal spell or a counter spell, we'd probably lose here. We go and get a Volcanic Island. The other option is we ponder and brazen borrow or something. That slows us down a little bit more. This is a really tough call. If only we hadn't have kept a, uh, an unplayable hand by accident. So our opponent hasn't played a counter spell yet. And their deck has dazes in, I believe. So I'm going to just do this line. Go for... Alright, so we found the land. We've also got multiple creatures that can buy us a bit of time. Pestamite is actually the worst of them here, I think. So we'll go for it like this. And then we can try and Brazen Borrower. Maybe our opponent fights over it. It makes our life a little bit easier moving forwards. I don't really want them to draw an extra card here. Let's see if they bin anything to the frog. Let's try and petty theft this little chap out of the way. Which is not really what the game is about, but the cards is kind of what the game is about. I think they'll just let this go and then replay on the second main phase. Unless they have a clean answer like this, yeah. Okay. So our opponent is going to get to see what we're all about, which is not ideal for us. All right, so they're getting... They basically just use that to reset their surveil land. It's getting tough for us now. Well, it was tough for us from the start because of uh, my horrible keep. But it's good content, I suppose. <laughs> all right, so make a cat. Got to see for Exarch. What are we doing with our Exarch is another question. Are we tapping down the frog so they can't with it? I think so. It does give the game away a little bit. So we don't get bashed by the frog this turn. We have a blocker for their creatures. The question is, do we just like slam the Splinter Twin into our opponent's five card hand? I don't think we do. Three mana. This is a prismatic ending to kill our Exarch. There it is. They could have done that and then attacked. Very strange that they chose not to. Right, we're back to doing the same thing again. They have high cast force of will mana there. But we don't really have any other way to play this game right now. Wow, they're not hard casting it. I wonder what's going on over there. 
they get the city's blessing this turn and get a bunch more guys, maybe. Another Ocelot. A Johnny. Okay. So now they make so many guys that we can't block even if we want to, right? So let's say we tap this down. We block this. We're still taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're dead here. That is unfortunate that our opponent gets to see what we're all about. But the Blood Moons here are pretty good. What actually won that game for our opponent wasn't all these little cat things. It was entirely the fact that they just had this frog absolutely draining our life turtle whilst drawing them a bunch of cards. So how would we like to approach this one? I think maybe we're trimming the borrowers out. I like the moons here because our opponent doesn't have the most amount of response to them because their mana base is pretty shocking, which is something I discovered playing that deck. We want to keep the removal spells here. Are we indexing this heavily on the blasts? I think we probably are. Like, Tamiyo has to go because it stops our combo. A spell pierce. I don't think we need the spell pierce here. We'll probably trim a snappy. A couple of little bits here and there. All right, I'm down with this. All right, we have Tamiyo backed up by a force of will. We can work our way towards a blood moon. Got a removal spell for anything that our opponent wants to play, like Guide of Souls or whatever. We're going to see a plow on our Tamiyo. We have to decide if we want to save our Tamiyo here. I think the answer is no, we don't want to save the Tamiyo. I think it's more important to make sure this Blood Moon resolves. Or countering a frog. Which is if we play a Blood Moon whilst the frog's in play, we lose the game. Alright, this is excellent. No frog this turn. Oh, made it hard for ourselves this round. Alright, so we're probably going to see a little one-drop creature, I would imagine, here. Could be another Ponder, though. A Tamiyo. No, it's white mana. An Ocelot Pride. We have two Lightning Bolts, so I'm perfectly happy to just nail this right now. Our opponent does have Dazes and Force of Wills in their deck. We didn't find what we wanted to, so we're going to have to wait another turn. Ponder. I don't think we are about the Deceiver Exile life just yet, but I will take the Brainstorm and the Scalding turn. A Tamiye. I am very much going to Lightning Bolt this creature. A Brainstorm. Do I want this Tamiye to resolve? I don't think I do. All right, this is what we're fighting over. Mm, I don't like this pause. A force of will. So I don't want this brainstorm on top of my library or not. I don't think I do. I think we're actually incentivized here to get the thundering falls here, even though that might cut us off a of double blue, which could be annoying. Seaver Exarch, that's not the one we want. That can go into the graveyard. So our opponent has a basic so they can fetch stuff here. I want them to fetch the thing, so this is the turn we cast. Ah... Uh, is this the turn we cast the Pyroblast? If our opponent plays a frog, that's so devastating for us. Tamiyo is also devastating in a different way. I think we have to let our opponent go to their turn. Because we want them to get the, the fetch land to get the surveil land here. At end step. So they're probably going to get the Meticulous Archive. Unless they've changed the list. Yeah, okay. So if we play the Blood Moon, they go and get a basic. And then maybe they can Hydroblast their way out of this. Alright, they put the card on top of their library. So you have to let this Tamiyo connect. Hate it, but it is what it is. And then we're going to Pyroblast this Tamiyo. So we held it in case they played a frog. Brainstorm again. They drew a Brainstorm. Um, okay. Now we do have four more Pyroblasts in our deck. I'm not really convinced that the Ocelot Pride stuff in our opponent's deck is very good. It didn't feel great to me when I played it. Alright, so we have our second blue source as well. But what it does do, do we want a second blue source or do we want just the Thundering Falls to have a bit more selection whilst we still can? I think we probably need the Thundering Falls here. It only leaves us with one blue source for now. But yeah, I think like the strength of this deck is just all the other things in the deck. Uh, I will put it on top of my library. It doesn't threaten Tamiyo the, in the biggest fashion. But it does draw us more cards. But yeah, I think like everything around the Ocelot stuff is really strong and that's why the deck's good. Like, the core of, like, Tamiyo Frog is very strong right now. All right, they drew a Force of Will as well. Yeah, our opponent's rips here have been pretty good. Now, we did obviously just gift them the first first game because we made a misclick with our opening hand. All right. All right you could play your one-mana one-twos. Let's get Tamiyo in there. We can flip Tamiyo, plus Tamiyo, minus Tamiyo, get Pyroblast. That is a long-winded way of getting rid of this Tamiyo, but it's a thing we can do. 
All right, I will get this basic. Yep, so you're seeing Path to Exile crop up now purely because you need answers for Psychic Frog in the format. All righty. I would have preferred if we didn't just completely punt the first game here by misclicking, but it's looking tricky. All right, so we get rid of the Tamiyo now. We just have to deal with this other Tamiyo and find a way of actually winning the game ourselves. But we've got some moons that we can put into play that are pretty game-ending on this board. All right, so we can just have six for our opponent's turn. They know we don't have anything. We know we don't have anything. What have you found, opponent? They probably just found some more cards off of their Tamiyo. If they don't have a land in hand, they might be inclined to crack the clue. Because they know we have Blood Moons in our deck, so they might want to try and find a basic. Okay, that does not impact this game. Sure. Our deck does everything it needs to do on 4 mana. Another Pyroblast. Does our opponent have another Brainstorm, is the question. I think we are right to hit this. Tamiyo, they're going to need two. They're going to need a land. Oh, really? Oh, no. The third one. Ah, every time. It's amazing. Uh, they've got these like Guide of Souls and Ocelot Pride clunking up their deck. But they always have the right thing. Like they put the decks and the cards in their deck to draw them, right? It's not our opponent's fault that they're drawing well. It's just one of those things. It's just irritating from our perspective. Uh, okay. So th these two creatures are reasonable together. They can certainly snowball out of control. But in my experience playing with this deck, I'm not convinced that this is better than just having some other good creatures. Right, they get a guy. They get uh, an energy, so next turn they can turn something into an angel. A lightning bolt. A little bit late. I'll bolt this ocelot. Because this is the thing that's going to end the game quickly. So they can turn one of these into an angel and put two counters on it. So it's going to be a cat angel. Or they're going to pump itself. If they pump itself, it dodges lightning bolts. That's a pretty sound move. If we had removal of other colours, our opponent would probably put on the cat token instead. So that we have two things that we might want to kill. I can take our Thundering Falls. Fine. Now, the only thing we can't cast in our deck, really, is the Splinter Turner. We don't really want to cast that. All right, our opponent's got Ponder back off their Tamiyo. Another little guide. Sure. Maybe it's time to bring back Pyroclasms. Uh, do we keep this island for brainstorm purposes? Probably. Might need two cards to get out of this spot. All right, they're going to gain a bunch of energy here. So this is three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to put us to two. Not really sure what our out is here. Uh, I guess Deceiver Exarch can tap down a Guide of Souls and block another one. And then we take two. That's still lethal. All right, I think we just lost this one. Yeah, so we misclicked to keep a, an unplayable hand in game one. And in game two, our opponent literally just had all the things at all the right time. But, you know, that's what happens when you play blue decks, right? You've just got so many good spells in your deck. And then you're also playing these, like, one-mana guys that... Like, when they're together like this, they look good. But I don't really like playing my threats if they need to have multiple things. Because when I played this deck yesterday, I just found that my opponent could just remove one of them. And then I just had a squire and wasn't really doing anything. Or a one-mana, one-one sort of thing. So, I think there might be a shell where you can build this where it's a bit better. Where you lean into more creatures. But I'm not convinced by it in, like, a... A blue-white tempo-y style shell. But I could be wrong. It's just my impression so far. Let's go to round four. We've taken our first loss. All right. I do not like this hand. Let's make sure we click the correct mulligan button this time. Okay. Now this hand is a lot tastier to me. We can keep this. I don't know how useful the Magus is going to be. I think the Magus is generally less useful than the Lightning Bolt. So that's what's going to go here. Quite like these Bloom Burrow basics. There's... I think there's like one for each season. So this is the winter one. Nice. Like, basic lands are basically the best thing in the game of Magic the Gathering, right? It's just the foundational pieces that make the whole game work, and they are a nice, beautiful thing. All right. So you're telling me that I want to be able to answer this. So we go to attacks first and get our clue. Then we cast a Brainstorm. Do you know what I'm not seeing here? It is red mana. Right, I guess we bury these two. I guess we plus... Deploy our land. We have a Brazen Borrower for next turn, but our opponent can just kill us right now with a Sephiroth Illusionist. Are they going to go for it? Are they going to respect our blue mana? All right. We floated a little mana there just to make them a bit wary. All right, so we're going to get to see their deck here. 
see if they're an Ardu build or not. They are an Ardu build. I think that's the correct way to build breakfast these days. How long Nardu remains, who knows. I think Nardu is a very strong card that is currently overshadowed by Frog and Grief. Cabal Therapy targeting us. All right, I will scoop to that. I don't want our opponent to see that we've got some nonsense going on here. So, this is a matchup where I would like some Surgical Extractions. I also think the Pyroblasts are pretty good here. You just take out the Illusionist. I like all these things. I'm not big into the Magus here. I'm not big into the Borrowers. I think we care about the, as a saga token, Spell Pierce. Probably not worth it for us. And then it just leaves us trying to find a couple more cuts. Our uh, opponent's a combo deck. So I think we, we want to keep our cantrips here. We'll trim one Snapcaster Mage and maybe one Pestamite. And try and work like that. Seems okay. I think we can get around as a saga beats. All right, this hand looks pretty good. We have the mana we require, which is a step in the right direction. So our opponent is not going to mess with our mana in, uh, in their deck. So we can just go and get the Volcanic Island and play on a good selection of things. Right, we've got Tamiyo. We don't have a, f a blue card for the Force of Will, but we do have the Red Blast Ashuko. Sure. If we draw a blue card now, we have Red Blast and Force. We did not draw that. I think I'll just play out the Volk here. We'll go and get our... Tamiyo cracking in and assume that our red blast can do enough for us. We can play around a daze and they're not playing anything out. They don't have a second land, which probably means their hand is absolutely stacked. So let's hope that we can find a blue card to at least try and leave it. Okay, well, it's a card that does something. So I will take that. Let's get another card off of our Tamiyo. Right, we got red blast, we got lightning bolt. I'm going to get thundering falls before we commit to the clue token. Try and actually select for the card we're about to draw off of it. I would very much like to keep that ponder. Our right, opponent's gone to clean up and got rid of a Nardu there. I would like to cast a Brainstorm, I think. Oh, we should have attacked first. That was an error. Uh, our hand is pretty darn stacked here. I don't think we need both of those. I wouldn't mind having another land for next turn. So we put this one on top. I guess we put the Snapcaster. And then... The Mountain here. Plus this, play this out, and then we can try and snap cast up with red blast up. Sorry, not snap cast up, uh, pestamite with red blast up next turn. We have two red blasts, a lightning bolt, and a force of will here. I don't think we're losing this one. We'll see. A narc amoeba. That is not what our opponent wanted. That is not the two mana blue spell our opponent wanted at all. Well, let's cast this. They're just doing this so they can threaten our. Tamiyo. Am I interacting with this daze? We can just win the game if this happens. And if our opponent fights over this, they can't fight over our red blasts. Right, so there's a mountain on top. I'll deploy this. All right. So I like how he sideboarded here. Our opponent's hand didn't really come together there. So we kind of both had a non-game, really. So now we're going to have a proper game and see how that fares for us. And we're just going to go in. I like what I've done here. Um, I believe in Island Ponder. We've got some interaction. We have two forms of interaction for our opponent if they want to try and combo us. Right, got, uh, okay, turn one, Nomad. Sure. All right, I'm just going to play this. And we're going to hold up Red Blast rather than Pondering. Get ourselves a Volcanic here. Let's try and counter this Cephalodonist with a Red Blast. All right, step one. We didn't die on turn two. Splinter Twin. All right, we are well on our way. Let's have a little pondering. I like the land. I like the lightning bolt as well. So I guess we bury the brainstorm and put the land on top and then the lightning bolt. All right, we have a path to victory. We have three pieces of interaction for our opponent. Not looking forward to the Nadu here. Okay, it's just a Shuko. That's fine. They've got two of one side of their combo. Yep, the Nomad beats continue to jab it away at us. I don't think we're lightning bolting here. I'd rather just have the maximum amount of interaction on our opponent's turn. We will need to find another land if we want to try and combo off here. We're going to see a surveil land from our opponent. We are. All right, hedge maze. They did not mill it over. Interesting. A Lavinia. We have a removal spell for the Lavinia. Take two. 
Let's go and get ourselves... I think it's a mountain here, so we're just guaranteed to have the mana for the Splinter Twin. Let's untap our mountain. Let's bolt this Lavinia. A Pyro Blast. Uh, I kind of don't want to cast this Ponder. So if we miss on the blue card, it's really awkward. I'm kind of looking for land and blue card, which is quite likely, though. All right, I'm going to believe in the deck. We've gone this far. A land and a blue card, you say? We have a land for next turn if we want it. We have the blue card for now. So we bury the Ponder, put the Scalding Tarn on top, and then the Force of Will. All right. Opponent's got three cards in hand. We've got potential to win this one. A Plow on our XR. Hmm, how do I want to approach this one? I think I'm going to exile our opponent's Cephalid Illusionist in response. See what's in their hand. And then we know if we are counterspelling this or not. Okay, so we get rid of Illusionist, 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 Illusionist. And they have Force of Will, Prismatic Ending, Cabal Therapy. So they can't win the game if we counterspell this. So let's just win the game. Let's do the thing. All right, that's the match. Pretty good. So this is meaning we are playing for the 4-1 with Splinter Twin in 2024. And the round we lost, I did misclick and keep uh, dodgy hands. So I'm pretty happy with how we're going. Let's see if we can put the 4-1 on the board. All right, we got Tamio into some other stuff. I think this is worth keeping. We're on the play. Tamio feels very good in our list. I'm not a big lover of it in the aggro decks, but in the sort of the slower decks that want to take the time to draw the cards, uh, been very impressed with the Tamio. Certainly something I underrated a little bit when I first saw it. I put this mulligan to five cards. How worried about that should I be? I don't think you can keep a hand that's... Uh, you, I don't think you can throw back a good hand just to try and fish for a combo one, whatever. And that one that lets you not die to turn one stuff. There's not that much of it about in Legacy, but also I just don't think that's a good way to play the game because you're susceptible to so many things. All right, our opponent is doing this again. I see. Uh, do we just start ramping up with our Tamiyo? I think we do. Let's cast a Brainstorm. We can always cycle away a card with the Thundering Falls. All right, we don't need to do that now. So we can put this away. And I don't think we need a second Mega, so put that away as well. Then we flip our Tamiyo, shrink the Guide of Souls, play a Flooded Strand. This gives us access to removing any creature that our opponent plays with the Lightning Bolt. Unless there's a Psychic Frog. Right, that's a wasteland. That is an ocelot. Uh, would I rather kill the ocelot or the guide of souls? That's kind of an interesting one. I think it's probably the guide. Yes, our opponent has a wasteland, but we already have a wasteland target. This way they can't wait us off of colours as easily. Right, they're going to daze that, are they? So this is going to make them have some amount of little friends. Are they going to wasteland us and put us back to no lands? That is a, an interesting question. Tamiyo, pretty good at holding these little critters at bay. Let's shut our opponent's mana down. They've got two mystery cards in hand and a tundra. So they could have force of all blue card. All right, that's in. Our opponent's land is now switched off. We can block relatively effectively against our opponent's board. All right, they're just scooping it up. Oh, Blood Moons, love you. Love you so much, you do all the work. All right, so these are the things we want in a matchup like this, as we discussed before. Spell Pierce is not where I want to be. Um, the Borrower is an answer to Frog, but we're boarding in better answers. So I think we just strip those out. And then you can probably trim on the Twin. We kind of need the stuff to... Right, let's trim these two and one Twin. And then... Looking at a Ponder or a Brain... It's probably a Ponder rather than a Brainstorm. Obviously, the quality of Ponder and Brainstorm do vary depending on if we have a Blood Moon down. But they're still blue cards, so we're going to go in and see if we can get there. Our opponent did multi fives. That certainly helped us out a little bit. Uh, like, this does do a thing, but it doesn't do anything else. I think we need to be a little bit more disciplined here. All right, now this is a much better hand. Um, I think we throw away one Pyroblast. Because that way we have access to two Pyroblasts and two Lightning Bolts uh, because of the Snapcaster Mage. The Tamiyo, we are going to see a Tamiyo. Do we just want to do ships in the night with our Tamiyos? Or do I want to Lightning Bolt this one and get it gone? It's better to Lightning Bolt this because we, then we can hit the frog. And the frog is scarier than anything else our opponent has. Alright, they've got a daze here. 
it's certainly a little troublesome. But it's going to be a little while before they can crack clues off of this. But if they have a brainstorm, then they can flip this. We can pyroblast it. Play our Artamio. We can hold up a pyroblast. Again, I would rather pyroblast a frog than a Tamio. Oh, they've got a swamp in their build. That is interesting. All right. There's no point blocking. It doesn't do any damage. A psychic frog. Okay. I would rather play around with days to kill this. So I'm going to get our Thundering Falls. All right. I'll put this on top of my library, I think. We can try and nail both of these creatures in one go. All right. Let's see if our opponent takes the bait to jump the frog and kill our Tamio. I don't think they will. But we at least got her off of that mistake for our opponent. All right, let's try and pyroblast this frog. Around days. Let's see if we can lightning bolt this one while we're here. All right. That was a very good turn for us. The swamp is interesting. The build that I saw and played didn't have a swamp in. All right. Well, we need to find a land so we can try and pyroblast this. That's a lot of pride. I don't care about that one. We can just, if we draw a land, we can also jump in and deal with the frog that way. I think the play here is our last play didn't get counterspelled. So let's just get this Snapcaster in. Get back our Pyroblast. Say no to the frogs. This is always going to gain life. I would rather just have a clue token rather than prevent one life. It's got first strike, so we can't block with the Snapcaster Mage particularly profitably. But you know what does block one ones quite effectively? Well, that's one fours with flash. So our opponent's going to make a guy. Guide of Souls. So this is going to trigger and get some energy as well. Cracking the clue. So they're going to make a little cat and gain an energy and gain a life. Okay, I'm going to attack with my Tamiyo. And then I'm going to Deceiver Exarch, our opponent, in there after they've attacked, I think. So that we can delete this Ocelot. In comes the Exarch. Say hello to my little friend. All right, I'm going to tap target opponent opponent controls. If they have a, a removal spell, they can play it. But if we take out their their only blue source, they can't ponder. It's going to be difficult for them to get a frog into play. All right, they would like to petty theft our Exarch. Sure. One, two, three. Uh, do I want to trade my Snapcaster with a cat token? Not particularly. This is keeping the Guide of Souls at bay. So they're going to make a little friend. We have to be wary of the city's blessings soon, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, do I want to try and draw a clue or do I want to, we can exarc, untap a land and draw a clue. That seems like a very solid play to me. A ponder from our opponent. Okay, more lands and the city's blessing. Two cards in our opponent's hand. Do they beat the zebra exarc though? They know we have an exarc so their attacks will be interesting here. Let's get a basic island, so the Magus is better. Let's cast our little friend. I'll untap my Thundering Falls so I can get a clue going. If our opponent wants to interact, they should do it now, because we could crack a clue and find some piece of interaction. They would like to Brazen Borrower. I would like to draw a card. Scalling Tarn, not the most exciting card. The Swamp might be a sideboard card for our opponent as well. So our opponent's going to make loads of tokens here. So things are beginning to get out of hand. A Red Elemental Blast. That's not the most helpful. So we could flip the Tamiyo and minus the Tamiyo. Uh, sorry, and plus the Tamiyo, and it stops all of these from dealing damage. Which feels like a pretty good thing to do. One, two, three, four, five. No, yes, yeah, so we crack a clue here. Go attacks. Crack this, go get another island. Ready for the Magus. A card here. I'll flip the Tamiyo because our draw step plus the two clues we've cracked. Shrink our opponent's creatures. When they attack. Do I play out another Tamiyo? No, I think I just hold up the Red Blast. So our opponent's probably going to get a Surveil Land if they have one. They don't have one. They're just getting basics. Cracking a clue. That's perfectly reasonable. Like we got, The other option we have for next turn is to Snapcaster and then Bolt the Ocelot's Pride. Brainstorm. Do I care about the Brainstorm? Do I care about what comes out of the Brainstorm? That's always a tricky one. Our opponent's got two cards in hand. I don't know how good they are. I think I'm going to let them have this Brainstorm. I'm a little bit reluctant about this. Because obviously the Red Blast can't hit all of the creatures our opponent has. It stops the Borrower and it stops the Frog. So that's something. A Wasteland. Okay. It's not so bad. You're going to attack? Oh. They've got the, um, the counters to put on this if they want to. Yeah. 
This is attacking our Tamiyo. Sure. Well, we can plus a Tamiyo and then snap cast a bolt. You get to make a bunch of guys here. Yep. And they get a lot more other stuff on top of that. Okay. So we could... Right. I think step one is probably Snapcaster. Is it the Guide of Souls I'm more worried about here? I think it is. Let's bolt the Guide of Souls. That stops them gaining the life and putting the counters on, which is kind of one of the annoying things. Uh, we can tap this creature down. Plus the Tamiya already. Do we want to tap that creature down? Do we want to hold up Red Blast? We can kind of do... Can't really do both though, can we? I think I'm going to play a Tamiyo here. And then hold up Red Blast. And cracking clues, but we're almost certainly not going to get a chance to crack clues. Our opponent can Wasteland us so that we can't crack a clue. And also means it's going to be harder for us to do the old playing around days for our Red Blast. I ponder. I don't think this is our Red Blast target when we have a Brazen Borrower sat there. We need to keep our Tamiyo alive. That is an important part of win this game. They did not shuffle off the ponder. That's a bit rude. Attacking with both of these. They get smaller. Block here. We pyroblast the borrower. An orcish bowmasters, you say. Fair enough. Goodbye, Tamiyo. Eh? Alright. So they're going to make another orc token. But it's going to be a zero zero, so it's going to die. Weird card. So these clues are kind of annoying in the face of this bowmasters. Sure, you can have another guy. We can tap down your two guys that matter, though. A brainstorm. Let's get the Exarch in. Let's take out their Ocelot. I'm going to take out their Borrower. So Tamiyo is certainly awkward with the Orc Bowmaster in play, because we can't just draw all of our library, because that's going to go end very poorly for us when our opponent pings us for 20. A Tamiyo. Okay, it's a solid one. Don't think our opponent can attack here. End step. We've got another Thundering Falls in here, so we'll take that selection. A Ponder. We lose a Snapcaster Mage. We give them a bigger creature. I think that's still fine here. Sometimes you have to ponder into things. Um, what am I interested in taking out here? We put Island on the bottom. Then the Pyroblast. And the Lightning Bolt. Yes, our opponent gets to hit us with this Bowmasters. I will shoot that Bowmasters here. We'll plus the Tamiya. And we'll draw from a clue. We can Pyroblast away their Tamiya. We can tap this down. So this is coming in for two. This is coming in for two. This is obviously just doing annoying Tamiya things. Do we want our opponents to get any more clues? We know there's an island on top. Right, I'm more worried about them having a Tamiya. So let's just try and... Get rid of that one. Okay. <clears throat> do we want to represent something or do we just want to draw from this clue? I think we probably just want to draw from the clue. All right. Flood strand from our opponent. So you get to hit our Tamiyo for four damage. But we can tap it down next turn. Which does mean they get to make more guys. But as long as we have a Tamiyo, the guys aren't a problem. Let's try and shut down our opponent's mana a little bit. Let's wasteland our Thundering Falls. Okay. Uh, cracking the flooded strand. I don't think they've got another basic in here. But I guess they want the thinning. The marginal thinning. I'm going to leave this in hand for the brainstorm purposes. True. I'm going to play this out so I can play around a days actually. Celestial Purge on the Blood Moon. Okay. So we'll tap down the Cat Angel. Right. Tammy is going to go down to three here. Prince got two cards in hand. Plus of Will. Plus this. Tammy is going to go down to one on the next turn. So that could be exposed to an Orcish Bowmasters, but we do have the Force of Will for that. Estomite would be pretty good just to trade with the Bowmasters, or with the uh, Borrower. But alas, is not what we have right now. So next turn, Tamiyo could die if we don't find anything. And then the floodgates of little cats open up. Abiding Grace. That's pretty annoying, actually. Because they get the energy guy back, and then the energy guy means that all their guys are huge. All right, we're still in this game. What a silly game. Sure. More Deceiver Exarchs. A brainstorm from our opponent. A little bit behind on clock, but we should be able to win given enough time. This is still a decent amount, but we don't know how long this game is going to continue to go on for. 
So we bought ourselves another turn of having Tamiya around. I wonder if our opponent just attacked us if they could have won this game that way. I guess the issue of Tamiya ultimating is kind of annoying, but you could just attack it every now and then, get a little bit of extra damage in. So I don't know how much damage is Tamiya soaking up, but yeah, our opponent's just making the exact same comment. They, they reckon it's taking 30 damage, which may well be true. I haven't done the maths. We're in turn 14 now. Psychic Frog. All right, that's a very good card that can certainly undo a bunch of the stuff we got going on. A Scalding Tarn, that's pretty bad. So we're going to lose our Tamiya, and then we're going to be trying to draw the Splinter Twin whilst our opponent doesn't have counter magic or removal, which might not be the easiest thing in the world. Send the Frog. Yeah. I assume they're going to jump the Frog now. Are oh, they letting us block the Frog? That is curious. They've got three cards in hand. So this can be a five. All right. Quite the gang block there. Tamiyo is no longer in play though. Which is devastating for our chances against our Prince board. Yep, you can take out our land that isn't doing anything. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think that we are dead on our opponents. Actually, we got a lot of just blockers on the ground. I guess we're just going to see how this pans out. I don't think it goes well for us. So if our opponent might miscalculate. Well, not miscalculate, but calculate based on having the Brazen Borrower alive. So block here, here... Here, here, here. Haven't done the maths. I think that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I think that is lethal. Yeah. All right. To game three. Uh, I like how we sideboarded here. I think we're fine. Kind of tempted to have the other Splinter Twin, just so we actually have the way of closing the game out. Uh, maybe the Pestamites are good too. So maybe we want these three cards back in. What do we want to cut for them? I guess we don't want to draw Blood Moon super late here. So maybe we'll trim, maybe trim one Blood Moon. Maybe we trim the Blood Moons and keep the Magus. We can't ramp it out, so our opponent will have a chance to fetch. At least this is a creature with power and toughness. All right. No lander again. Okay, we'll keep this one. Uh, I guess we're not about this Deceiver Exarch life right now. I'm probably putting away a Pyroblast. No, it's probably the Magus here. Right, our opponent's counterspelling our thing. Okay. Brainstorm. Help me out here. Oh, we lose the game. That is pitiful. We're brainstorm locked, so our opponent just gets to win the game now. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I think this matchup feels pretty solid, though. Yep, we are brainstorm locked. Our opponent has a psychic frog. If the, if the land after... If, sorry, if the card after the next one isn't a land, then I'm just going to scoop it up. It's unfortunate. All right, our opponent's attacking us now. They're going to start getting that sweet, sweet frog juice. Delicious frog juice. Yep, they flip the Tamiyo. We have answers for this, but we don't have any mana. All right, so we got one more draw, and then I scoop. If it's not a land, we can just say goodbye. If it's an island, we'll probably scoop as well. We just... I guess that we could still draw out, but it's just... It feels like, oh, maybe we could draw out, but when your opponent's sat there with a Psychic Frog drawing extra cards every turn, it's just, the cards are in their hands, so it doesn't feel like it's overwhelming, but it is. All right, they've got a little cat. Babbage dust for one. Okay, so we drew a land that is relevant here. Let me Pyroblast the frog. All right, next turn we can Pyroblast the Tamiyo before it pops. So we're starting to get somewhere. All right, our opponent's plus their Tamiyo. So we definitely have to Pyroblast that, otherwise our opponent draws their deck. Now they might have been Sandbag and Removal because they don't care about the frog because the Tamiyo is the real prize. It is what it is. Alright, more cats. Uh, Alright, let's try and kill this Tamiyo. Play our own Tamiyo. We're fighting the good fight here. So another thing I'm not really keen on with the cat is it's very hard to get the life gain on it if you don't have the Souls Guide and your opponent has any creatures because it's just a 1-1. One -one. Right, brainstorm from our opponent. How much damage are we looking at here? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ah, oh, a plow that gains us no life. Boo. So if they just pitch two cards to the frog, we are dead here. And I believe our opponent knows to do that. Yep, there's one. And we're obviously, like, completely cooked over here. Yep. Sometimes you'll multi-five and get brainstorm locked. This was one of those things. 
All right, so unfortunately, we were we were close to having the 4-1, but it all slipped away from us in that last one, which is unfortunate. We did lose the same deck twice, but I don't necessarily think it was that much of the... Well, there was uh, the, the, the dodgy mulligan in one, and then there was obviously the mulligan in this one where it didn't work for us because we just couldn't get anywhere with it. And then in the first time we played against that blue white deck they they in the other game they sorry in the other game they drew the exact thing they needed several turns in a row we just needed one re one turn of respite from that to win and we didn't get there which is a shame all right so let's talk about this deck honestly this deck felt pretty good uh, i'm not sure if we need the spell piss is one thing that i would suggest and i think the number of borrowers you play are pretty adjustable too so you could easily swap these two slots for something else but all in all, the deck felt really solid to me. We, you know, the, the only rounds we lost were against a deck that I feel that if we were to play it multiple times, we'd probably be fine. Because a removal spell takes out their, it gives you a two for one against their threats because they need to have the, the cat and the guide. Otherwise, they don't have a threat. So you can just two for one them with a removal spell and they just sat there with nothing. And we have lots of Pyroblast. I specifically played lots of Pyroblast because of the mess right now. So we can take out their frogs and tamios, which are the things we care about. So, yeah, felt pretty good. I think the, uh, was it we played against Odraz as well, and that felt fine too. I think the the Blood Moons is pretty solid. Maybe we can trim one Blood Moon. We only need five. We don't need to go the full whole hog and have six of them. But the Blood Moons giving you free games. The Splinter Twins giving you free games, then having like, you know, reasonable sort of controlly stuff like Tamio and Snapcaster Mage is fine. I'm not sure why I would replace these two for. I've played this deck before, like a while back, when it actually was felt good. But it feels pretty good today, to be honest. Tamiyo is, is big news. But when I used to play it, there's all sorts of things we played. I played Is It Charm once upon a time, Misdirection, a whole bunch of things. You can play Unholy Heat here, but it doesn't feel like we're going to have the most amount of card types in the graveyard for it. You could just play another Mace of the Moon main deck, just have four of those. That's probably fine too, especially in the current meta when there's a lot of greedy decks running around and decks that get completely shut off by the Blood Moon, like the Cloud Post and Eldrazi decks. So, yeah, there's definitely a bit of wiggle room available here. You could index more into beating some other decks on your side, but obviously we're quite heavily skewed. But I was very happy with how the deck performed today. It was a bit of a shame about the, the, the two mulligans that kind of ruined our little tournament today. But that's Magic the Gathering sometimes. Sometimes you'll be a clown and you'll click the wrong button. And that's just that's just life. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this one. I might jam back into some Twin at a later date. If you yourself play some Twin, let me know how it goes for you. What your changes for your slots are. It does interest me a lot. This is actually one of the decks I have available to build in paper. I don't have it built up right now. But I have all the stuff to build. I don't have many Legacy decks in paper. So I mostly play online. But this is uh, one that has a soft spot in my heart and won me quite a lot of Magic the Gathering cards. I think it got me two Lion's Eye Diamonds and two Signed City of Traitors, among other bits and pieces playing this deck. So, got a lot of love for this. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel and doesn't cost you anything. And if you know anyone who's interested in watching stuff like this, by all means, send them my way. All right. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.